Since 1989, archaeologist Lori McLean has been traveling by boat to the remote excavation sites contained within his study area. McLean often takes tourists along for an interpretive tour of these sites located off the east coast of Newfoundland and Labrador. This morning, McLean has two visitors with a particular interest in a unique stone quarry he found in 1989 with his surveying team. Before McLean takes his visitors to that site known as the Bloody Bay Cove Quarry, he first brings his visitors to the beaches, one of the more well-known archaeological sites in the region. This little cove has been known as the beaches since about 1840. Uh, we have a reference from J.B. Jukes, Newfoundland Surveyor General of the time, who spent a night here uh, and he called this the beaches. And he had a local guide with him who was helping him uh, negotiate the local shoreline here, doing some surveying, looking for minerals, etc. Then the next visitor here of note, or that we have record of, is T.G.B. Lloyd, another English surveyor, or geologist surveyor, and uh, he was more interested in the Aboriginal uh, significance of the spot than Jukes was. He actually referred to the place as the old camping grounds, and he counted the remains of 19 Beothic houses, collected some artifacts from a few of the houses. Lloyd's report is very important because he gives us the general dimensions of the place in 1874, uh, about 35,000 square meters, about a quarter of a mile long, about 120 yards wide. And that's important for us, because that uh, today in 2009, that uh, permits us to uh, measure erosion of about 90% of the site since, uh, since 1874. Then in 1963, a CBC journalist lands here. He sort of kindles interest in the site, recovers some artifacts. In 65 and 66, Helen Devereaux conducts the first archaeological excavations here, followed by uh, Paul Corrigan in the early 70s for a couple of years. And then the site was fallow till 1989 when we started working here. We've been working here since 1989, every year except 1991. And so the work that we've done here and the archaeology before us in the 70s and 60s uh, all established Bloody Bay Cove Rhyolite as the main source of stone for the people that were living here. In the early 70s, Paul Krigman uh, did a lot of work along the southern eroding bank and he excavated a large maritime archaic area and he uh, had uh, three maritime archaic dates, the oldest being 4,990 years ago with a deviation of 200. So for years, Krigman's uh, radiocarbon date of roughly 5,000 years ago was the was the uh, base parameter for the maritime archaic occupation of Newfoundland. And uh, so that's the earliest evidence we have for, for the Aboriginal presence here, even though you know, the, the actual evidence for the Aboriginal presence predates that by 100 years, but we didn't have radiocarbon dates until the mid-60s, early 70s. So you had like your semi-permanent settlement here for the archaic. I would argue for the Eskimo and as well for the recent Indian. And we certainly have more evidence for that for the recent Indian because we have the substantial Beothic uh, house remains here, 19 houses here from the late 19th century. And there's a number of these large sites throughout, throughout Newfoundland. This seems to be a sort of a standard pattern, a base camp we would call it, with a, you know, with a number of satellite camps along the, lo the local coastline, including of course the quarry, six kilometers to the uh, southwest that way. To find out more about the Burnside Heritage Foundation's work and the designation as a place of provincial significance, visit our website at digthequarry.com. Join us now as we delve deeper into the lives of the people that once lived at the beaches and who mined rhyolite stone from the Bloody Bay Cove Quarry to make the tools essential to their survival.